Hi guys, I'm Tom. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Quick Watercolour Birds. In this one, I'm going to be painting one of the many requests that I've had, which is an American robin. Fantastic little bird, just like so many of the garden birds we have here in the UK and the smaller birds. They've got this amazing, funny little character to them and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this one. And we've got a lovely contrast of that really strong orange in sunlight and the yellow on the beak and also those same colours then cast in shadow and some of the more muted soft colours in kind of the wing, the head and the sort of the tail area. So it should be a really fun one. If you've got a request of your own, please do pop it into the comments. I've got a long list, but I'm slowly working through them. If you're before we dive in, allow me for a moment to say that I also have lots of Zoom demonstrations coming up. These, along with some Zoom painting courses as well, which I also have up at the moment, they're going to be an ongoing thing. So even if you're watching this video sometime after it was released, it's still worth checking the links in the description. You can hop over to my Patreon page completely free of charge for the line drawing and this copyright free reference photo which I'll also share. You can also while you're there check out what else I've got on offer over on Patreon at the paid tiers. So let's very quickly talk through materials. So I'm using Winsor & Newton classic paper. This is a, actually a wood pulp paper but it's one that I really love. It stays wet for a nice amount of time. The colours come out nice and bright and it's got a little bit of texture to it. Then the colours I'm going to be using, I'm going to go for a limited palette of one of each primary plus a little extra if I need it. So uh, the Prussian blue is quite a cool blue but it's also fairly muted and it just gives us really beautiful darks. It gives us some really lovely kind of clean and clear greyer colours when mixed with the other two primaries but it's kind of cool and bright enough that it will give some more vibrant greens in the background to kind of pop against the orange of the chest. I'm going to use quinacridone red, I've mentioned it before, as a lovely cool red which gives really vibrant purples if we need them. However, it's also kind of clean and bright and high chroma enough that it can give us some strong oranges, certainly these kind of more rusty oranges that we've got here. And then I'm going to use Oriolin yellow, which again I've mentioned before, it's a very cool yellow, so it does give us really bright greens, especially when it's combined with a cool blue. However, like the red, it is still very bright, it's very clean, it's very high chroma. So those two colours together, although they are in theory both cool, they will still give us some nice vibrant oranges, just not quite as vibrant as if we were using a warm version of each. If I can't quite get the orange that I want, I do have a colour here which is a tube orange. This particular one is a yellow orange, so it's actually a tertiary colour, but um, you get much the same by a normal tube orange with a bit of yellow in it. Um, so those are, those are my basic colours. Well, those three primaries are all transparent, so mixed together they can give really beautiful soft greys and kind of, and kind of coloured muted tones. And then the Prussian mixed with the red and a tiny touch of the yellow will also give some really lovely deep darks. I'm going to try a few different brushes from normal. I was sent these two brushes by uh, a fantastic mail order company in the UK here called Ken Bromley. Again, links in the description. I'm not sponsored by them, but I, I do little bits and bobs for them. And they sent me these brushes to try out. Uh, these are Winsor & Newton synthetic range. I have a synthetic squirrel quill, kind of mop type brush, big body, lots of water and pigment but it comes to a really fine point. Not used it much but it's a really beautiful kind of lively brush, uh, nice and soft and then we have a, a synthetic sable to give a go, a normal round size 8, lovely and soft and expressive and lively and then I've got my other two brushes that I always use which is a slightly smaller kind of mop or quill brush, the Jackson's Raven size 0 and my kind of normal workhorse which is the Pro Art Pro Lean Round, which is a size 10. So you don't need all of these brushes, but I've just kind of gotten them on hand. You could easily get rid of one of those. Um, and you could even try and do the painting with just one big one and one small one. Doesn't really matter too much. Normal kitchen roll, big pot of water, got the palette. Let's dive into the drawing and have a look at the painting. I had a nice response to the slightly simplified stripped back videos. As I explained in the last one, which was the Cardinal, I wasn't producing as many of these as I would have liked and it's because I was taking a little bit too much time in the production, the intro and the outro and it was kind of putting me off doing them as much as I would have liked. So I've stripped it back to this very simplified, straight from above. I'll quickly talk you through what I'm doing, say hello and then we'll dive into the painting and chat a little bit about it on the outro and that's it. I'm going to keep it that simple in an attempt to produce more of these. 
However, I'm also going to stick with the watercolour bites videos, which I'm really enjoying producing. They're a little bit more theory based with a few examples at the end of actual paintings and time lapses and stuff. I love making those. They're a little bit more in depth than involved. And I'm going to be introducing a little bit more portraiture and a little bit more wildlife work onto the channel as well. So if that all sounds like stuff you're interested in, please do consider subscribing and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and drop me a comment as well to let me know what you think of all of this stuff. It helps me work out what sort of things to produce in the future. Okay, so the drawing, very, very simple. As always with a bird, quite often we look for the egg shape first or I look for an egg shape first. Once I've got that basic egg shape and I've looked for the, the kind of overall tilt of it, I'm kind of seeing it as an egg shape there. So it's kind of tilted like that. The contrast with the, the, the tail, so we've got this nice kind of shape like that. They kind of play off each other quite nicely. And then we've got a much smaller sort of egg shape for the head. The key thing here for me is the angles, which give the character a number of proportions of those shapes. So that egg shape needs to be well proportioned within itself. How wide is it relative to how long? And then these shapes need to be well proportioned relative to each other. So how many times does that fit into that as an example? Or use something as a unit of measurement to help you get your proportions right if necessary. Uh, the more you do it, the more you'll feel comfortable doing it by eye. Beyond that, I'm kind of looking for alignment. So this is so important in getting the character of the bird. For example, if I drop a plumb line down from the, the kind of the end of the beak, it's way out past the chest. So if I accidentally got the end of the beak sort of inside the line of the chest or way outside of the line of the chest, it might not necessarily look wrong, but it will have a different feeling and a different character to this one. Equally, um, if I drop a line down from the eye, what do I kind of meet? I kind of meet the foot. Yeah, so I meet the sort of the, the foot area here where the toes start. So that helps me kind of line things up um, on the sort of on the horizontal or the vertical. You can do the same in other places. So if I drew a line across from the top of the tail, we kind of line up just below the mark of the neck there. And you can go on and on doing that. They're all great ways to help you triangulate and align things if you need to. If you kind of like drawing loosely to start with, but then need to kind of uh, tighten the drawing up in terms of placement of things, it can be a really great way to do that. And then once we've got the big shapes in pl place, the kind of the, the general, then we move into the specific. We start to break the egg up into the smaller shapes, keeping it very simple still. And then we begin to place the eye and the beak and kind of stick those on afterwards, still paying attention to the, uh, the shape, the accuracy of the shape and the placement of the shape is still important. We're going to do this in two parts, really. We're going to kind of pop on a nice lighter wash and then we're going to get into um, the shadows after that. So I'm going to dive into that really beautiful chest area and we're going to kick off with the Oriolan yellow, nice and bright. Try not to get any other colours in it because we want fairly bright oranges up here. And I'm going to drop in a tiny touch of quinacridone red, but not a huge amount to start with and just kind of get something down. I want to reserve a few lights of the page in the white area and then we're going to come down here and all of this is going to go into shadow anyway, so I'm going to keep this nice and light at the bottom. I know this will eventually go into shadow, but I'm actually going to keep it light so that when we put the, the shadow over the top, um, we can retain some sort of transparency there. It's a dead simple start, nothing, nothing majorly hard about that. And I'm just going to bring that yellow into the background because it might eventually become um, some green as well. And I'm going to chuck in a load of water into it. And I want to reserve a little bit of light catching the branch down there. And we're going to bring that into there. It's kind of having a bit of fun um, just playing with the colours, kind of sloshing it about a bit, basically. And, and then while this is still wet, I'm going to introduce a little bit more quinacridone red into the same mix, a little bit more yellow pigment as well. I want to start um, strengthening the mixture. And I'm just going to drop that in to a few places here just to get that strength of colour. And the more pigment I have of both the, the yellow and the red, the stronger the colour is going to get. I'm going to drop that in there. See, it's quite a rusty kind of muted colour, which is nice. I'm just kind of dropping it in there. Let's strike in a bit more of a strong yellow and just let all that colour kind of flow. It's hard to know exactly what it's going to do at this stage. I am actually going to use the tube orange because um, I really like it. It's going to give us just that extra punch of orange. The, the red and the yellow have got that kind of rustiness to them, which I really like. 
and then um, the the tube orange is just going to give it that little extra punch. It's going to make it zing a little bit more, and I think we need that. So I want to move quickly into this sort of grayed area at the back. Um, so if we take the the quinacridone red and we mix it with a little bit of depression, it's obviously going to shift things to being purple and tiny bit of the yellow in there which is the complementary to the purple and our only other mixing choice if we ignore the orange mixing all the primaries together in different amounts is always going to give us some sort of variation of a muted colored gray if you want to call it that so that's got this lovely feel to it on the back here so nice simple brush stroke there and then we're into the the dark of the tail at the back it's a nice kind of light gray so chuck a bit more water in it uh, this is all kind of settled down a little bit and um, I quite like the way that's working so I think I'm going to mix oppression with the red and let's see if we can just paint the tail very simply um, too purpley so the more yellow I add to the purpley mix of the the oppression and the red the more muted it becomes and the more of like a muted dark so I think I'm going to start at the end of the tail here with a nice thick mixture and I'm just going to nice simple brush stroke like that kind of get that broken brush stroke by doing it fast and then we can always get rid of some of the whites of the page if we decide there's a little bit too many of them so really really simple for the uh the tail here this this brush is so expressive especially funnily enough when you hold it a little bit lower down you can get these lovely broken brush strokes which i really like and You can kind of see where this is going already. I'm kind of avoiding painting into the wing just yet because I don't want that grey colour to to bleed into the orange too much. I want to keep that orange really nice and strong. So I'm going to mix a, a thicker consistency of paint, I'm probably coming up to about single cream paint consistency. The orange mixed with a little bit of the quinacridone and I'm just going to say here, while it's wet, we're going to get a slightly stronger colour in. I don't want to go too dark but there's a little bit of variation of tone in here and if I can just get it while it's wet we'll get a little bit more um, kind of softness to it and then down into this area as well and actually I feel like I'm actually now painting into the shadow area which I didn't intend to do necessarily I keep that a little bit lighter and inject a bit more of a yellow tone to it rather than so much orange there we go, a bit more of a strong yellow. That's better. And I'm going to think about introducing a little bit of a warm colour into here, as like the branch, even at this stage, and just let it bleed into the background a little bit more. And just as we move away from the the actual bird itself, we can let things flow together a little bit more and then where do I want to just push it a little bit darker with the kind of rusty colour just on the edge here not too much and we're going to go darker under here eventually I think we'll leave that as a we'll, we'll do that as a as a shadow later and notice how we're letting some of the colours just bleed into the background there um, I think I'm going to pick up this lovely yellow bead here and introduce a bit of Prussian into it and start introducing some green but on the whole I don't want to do too much and just let all of these colours kind of flow together down here we can make, always make something of them later if we decide we want to letting all those colours just flow together as long as we keep it light at least initially we can't go too wrong We can pull out some shapes that feel like leaves if we want to, that sort of thing. Um, so you had a red as mixed in with the green there. They've kind of cancelled each other out and given us some lovely muted colours. If I just catch the edge of the tail there and a little bit of it bleeds into the background, I'm not too fussed about that. And we might just bring a little bit of that green into here. And I think we'll trap a little bit of light on the head with some green here. Just trapping that light on the beak here. So it might, I might be in the way of the camera here, but just nice and simple. I 
don't want to paint neatly around the whole beak. I'm going careful with the negative shape of the background to trap the light on the top of the beak here. The underside of the beak will just do something like that and again letting all those colours just flow together. We've got a bit of a straight line as the way things finish here so I'm going to break it out into this area and just again let this colour just kind of flow, keep it light. Let's have it more at the bottom. I went for a less obvious, well what felt like a less obvious placement of the bird which was um I felt like I wanted to put it kind of low down and looking up, a bit more like the actual photo, but um, I thought, well, let's offset it into the top left corner, a less obvious way, and almost like it's looking back into the painting. No no particular reason other than I just thought it might be a fun thing to do, um, and having a, just a bit of a play with the the composition in that sense. I think that's um, that's plenty for this stage. Can always we can always re-tighten things up if we need to. I'd rather have it kind of loose and, and kind of fresh feeling with in going in and out of focus with the background uh, and then tighten it up afterwards if necessary. So I'm going to let all that dry off. I'm going to put in a, a kind of a, a soft grey in the background but not quite yet because um, I don't want that colour to bleed into the orange and things like that. I love the way the orange has kind of bloomed into this area here. It's actually quite similar to the photo because there's a little bloom of orange there which I didn't plan but it's kind of nice. Uh, we're going to let all that dry off and then come in and put a grey here, let that dry off and then we're going to finish off with the shadows on top. Okay so I really love that as a star. I've kept it really light. We've let all of the colours flow together. Like I said as long as we're aware of keeping things light, reserving lots of whites of the page to keep it lively, you really can do what you like with the colour. We can always tighten it up in places later if we need to. It's almost I'd prefer to start loose and splashy and light and then go darker and tighten it up. Almost erring on the side of more lights of the page than we need because we can again get rid of them if we want to. One thing I want to talk about are these little slices of white kind of around the bird. For me they're really important so that the bird doesn't feel like it's just been cut out and stick on or stuck on, sorry. Um, so it's thinking about the edges. So so here we're going to have like um, the light edge of the beak will be trapped by a slightly darker colour behind but the underside of the beak is slightly more shadowy so it's actually going to be darker than the background so we've got this interesting kind of counter change. I feel like this is a really lovely shape of the bird here so I've decided to accentuate it by just leaving the white of the page there. This is a really important shape here. I left it by um, white of the pages and these, and these spots help kind of break it up. Nice whites here kind of break it up and a nice white here so we've got a deep dark against that white. It's not that you always have to have these as whites of the page but I find it keeps the painting quite fresh when they kind of punctuate the background and break it up and especially when they're interacting with the bird and we're thinking about how they interact with the bird. I haven't decided before I started painting I'm going to leave a white there, one there, one there, one there, one there. It's kind of, I, I just kind of feel it as I go. And there's almost, um, if you feel a bit stuck on how to, to go about it, you can almost see it's like bit of background white, bit of background white, bit of background white. It almost has like this, this kind of one kind of background, no background, background, no background kind of pattern to it. It's not that formulaic and I haven't thought about it like that, but if you're struggling with how to kind of incorporate your backgrounds into a painting, that can be one way. To think about it but don't mind your colours bleeding into the background either. I think that can be a really nice thing. So before we dive into the really deep shadows I want to get some of this lovely light grey colour on the back here. I don't want it to feel too heavy and dark so I'm going in with quite a dry brush and I'm just going to kind of flick it on like that. I still want the colours to sort of flow together if possible um, but it's just it's like a base colour for later. Don't try and make it too much look like the subject. It's it's kind of a little, I've heard it called a little investment for the future of the painting. That's I think that's a nice way to think about it. Um, so we're just laying down a bit of colour. Keep it fresh and, and clean if you can in terms of colour. Don't go too muddy with the colour. Don't work the colour too much. Uh, kind of got a warmth to it there. I'd like to cool it down a little bit so I might introduce a little bit more um, Prussian into the mix as well. We're keeping it very watery. Uh, we are going to put some more dark into it eventually as well. 
and just keeping lots of whites of the page if possible. And the same on the head. The head has got a kind of slightly warmer tinge to it. So we're going to take some of the, the colour from there and I'm just going to lay it in very simply. It's almost like this is the light tone and we're going to be painting the darker tone over the top. So the light tone needs to feel nice and clean and fresh. Don't worry about it being really neat. In fact, the, the more broken the brush strokes, especially in some of the areas that will eventually be the light areas, the better. We've got a nice clean light on the top of the beak there, so I need to reserve that as a white of the page for now. Um, just broken brush stroke there with a bit of texture to it. And just something like that. Very, very simple. Um, looks a bit weird at the moment, but it's like I said, it's kind of that investment for the future of the painting. It will make more sense uh, later. I think for the first time, we're gonna drop down to a smaller brush and I wanna get the bright yellow of the beak in. So very, very watery. It's almost got a bit of an orange feel to it. And um, just gonna literally just brush it in. I'm, I'm almost just blocking in colors for later. I don't always work like this, but this, it feels like a nice thing to do here. And I'm gonna let a bit of that orange just sort of bleed into the purple. Um, actually, let's let's encourage that to happen a little bit more. It may it may not eventually show through in the final painting, but um, it's it's producing a nice sort of warm. Yeah, that's a really nice colour. It works better for the context of the painting, so I'm going to take the same approach into here. Just the, some of the orange from earlier, uh, dropping it in. Just drop it in there, nice and warm. I want a bit of a stronger yellow in the beak. Don't work the paint too much, especially as it's drying. And let me just strike this in now, nice and simple. I think we'd want to link these these shapes together a little bit, but reserve a nice little light there. Um, keep it lighter, a little bit lighter in there. That's it. Doesn't need to be much going on in there. Just trying to work out whether we might. I think we may paint the shadow now that the, the beak is cast. I'm not going to make it as obvious as in the photo. It's just going to be sort of a gentle little bit of shadow at this stage. We can always, again, we can always darken it if we decide we want to. Yeah, that's plenty. I like the way that all kind of that feels in that area. Go a little bit brighter with the yellow on the beak. It's already dried up there, so I'm just going to go in a little bit harder with the yellow, a bit more of a strong yellow. Make it make that beak really pop. Leave a few little whites of the page in places. So I'm being I'm. It's about as careful as I get at this sort of stage of the painting. Don't want to be too careful with it, but yeah, that's got a nice feel to it on the whole. Um, I think we're, we're kind of there with that stage. I feel like it wants a little shot of bright yellow just here that may merge into the, the head colour a little bit, but it just needs something in there. Okay, that's, that's kind of it. We're going to let that dry. And then the next stage is to come in and simply paint the medium sort of shadows and whilst they're drying, we're going to drop in some of the, the darker shadows to get some nice soft and wet into wet effects and, and see what we can do and then decide what we're going to do with the background. So we're just going to keep it really simple. We've still got the character of the bird, nice quick expressive brush strokes. Um, I'm happy that there's lots of whites of the page in places, keeping it kind of lively and fresh. Um, I just need to kind of keep that freshness as we bring it to a finish, really. We're just going to dive into the second one. We're effectively going to be painting the shadows now is the simplest way to think about this. We're going to start with kind of medium shadows and then slowly work in the darker shadows. I think I'll probably, I'm not quite sure exactly where I'll start. I mean, sometimes I like to start in the easiest place to understand. And for me, that's this big shape here. Other times I like to start in the focal point, bring up that to a certain level and then kind of go from there. Um, what I'm looking to do is kind of link the shadows together as much as possible. So the shadow from here will link wet into wet into the shadow on here, down into the legs maybe even into the branch, and then hopefully we'll naturally find a time to break into the background. Um, 
but the head will also be the same. The shadow from under here will kind of wet into wet into the shadow of here. Um, we can afford to paint the head separately from the body, so I think I'm going to start here and just kind of work down. So I'm going to come down to uh, a couple of smaller brushes. I'm going to start off with a size 8. You could easily use a size 10 or even slightly bigger, really. It doesn't matter too much. And I'm going to use my quinacridone red to paint the underside. So the colour in shadow on the underside of the beak here. And we need to make it significantly darker than the background, but just not too dark. I'm starting with the quinacridone red. And we're going to drop in a little bit of the Oriolan yellow until we get the right sort of tone. The water also kind of dictates the tone as well. That's a nice kind of single cream consistency of paint. It's still running a little bit, but it's got a bit more stiffness to it than some of the watery underlayers. And I'm just going to come in here and just start nice and simple. A little bit too much water on the brush. And we can always go a little bit darker. I'm going to start kind of like this. And notice I'm not too fussed on making exactly the right colour. I do want it to be warm, but it's the tone that I'm more interested in. That's got too much of a curve to it, so I'm going to straighten it off there. So that's the start one. And the tiniest touch of blue now to darken it. I don't really want to push it towards purple. It's just to make it like a darker brownier blue um, colour with the blue just taking the edge off that and pushing it darker. So I'm going to go a little bit darker in here and just sharpen up the tip just there and bring it in darker down there and just a little bit darker down. Think about how the beak fits onto the head, it's not, not just stuck onto the front. Um, any old how, it's kind of got a it's a shape to it and it sticks onto the front of the the head. I've gone a little bit curved when it's actually a straighter line so I'm just going to come in with this brush here and just pull that line to be a little bit straighter so I'm pulling the pigment out and then we'll, we'll go in and pop in the, sh the sharper detail um, in a wee bit just to sharpen it up. So while that bottom area is still wet I'm just going to load it with a bit more pigment and then I'm going to come down into the dark of the head. So Prussian blue, quite a lot of water to start just to aid the mixing. That turns it purple with the quinacridone, a little bit of yellow turns it more muted. And a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow. Kind of balancing those against each other until we get a bit more of a neutral colour, but maybe with a slightly bluey grey tinge to it. And I'm just going to come in down here, so I'm not going to focus too much on getting the perfect um, the markings or anything like that. A little bit less water in there so I can get some more broken brush strokes. And there's a little bit of light just hitting in there. Definitely coming down in here. And just let the brush do a lot of the work if we can. Like I said, not focusing too much on the markings themselves. I'm going to come round here. Notice how the, this brush has got this lovely liveliness to it and it gives us kind of some nice broken brush strokes without having to do a huge amount. And that kind of comes into there, nice sharp cast shadow. And then we're going to come over the top of the head here, let the brush do a lot of the work for us, trapping the light around the eye area. From here it kind of breaks over the front and just let's get that head shape right. That's it bringing it around the front here, down into there. One simple united wash. Notice how the red from the underside of the beak is feeding into, into there. Okay, so now we've got this nice wet wash. Uh, we also want that to just link nicely into the shadow that is casting over the chest, but I'm going to turn that shadow a bit more red and just kind of bring it out there a little bit. So that's kind of number one. And now we have this lovely wet wash. So if I want to work wet onto wet, I have to be fairly quick. I want to mix a really deep, dark, thick mixture now. So a little bit of the Prussian blue to kick off, then some quinacridone red, then a little bit of the yellow. So always balancing the three primaries. If it looks too blue, we add more yellow and red, which is the equivalent of adding orange complementary dulls it down. So now 
while it's still wet, I want to just place in some thicker slices of deep dark just to kind of get things moving a little bit more and just within here some deep darks and it's very dark at the back and it kind of flicks around to being a little bit lighter at the front and I just want to really sharpen up that transition there and kind of in there and here we just do kind of whatever just get it kind of flowing a little bit more so it always looks weird at this stage because the eye is really standing out like a sore thumb so just gonna but we'll deal with that in a moment so that's kind of stage one I now want to come back to my big brush and I want to look at getting the shadow in down here but before we do that notice how the blue has kind of stuck to the quinacridone red and that's going to give me a muddy colour if I'm not careful so I'm going to squidge out a bit of fresh quinacridone red there and what I want is this really deep rich colour kind of running down the side I'm not going to jump straight to the deepest shadow because I want to go a little bit lighter first so just quinacridone red with a little bit of the aureolin in bit more aureolin, bring it down here, a bit more yellowy and then that kind of comes down here in a very simple way and we do have this interesting little sort of series of markings here but then just down into here just just pushing the brush down and letting the brush do a lot of the work so we might I might soften this edge here so we come in with a damp brush and we just soften that so notice how we put down a sharp mark first and then we kind of soften it down a little bit I want a little bit of a stronger orange feel to things now we've got a nice strong color on there I just want a little bit more of that orange showing through so coming back into the light areas but being very careful not to destroy that um, that lovely yellow because that yellow is really important too. I'm going to come into a small brush and just soften that down. And just hit it with a with a soft damp brush and we can soften some edges down giving it that texture. And while it's still wet under here we're just going to pick this up bring it down into here. It does need to go darker so let's go more quinacridone red, make it, let's make it a really clean, vibrant wash and then start to push it darker. So we come down into here. And I quite like the way it broke into the background, so I'm just going to hit the edge of it and let it bleed back into the background a little bit. Now we need to go darker. We need to go much, much darker in that underside area. Just pull it out a little bit there maybe drop in a bit more orange a bit of that intense orange it's semi opaque this orange this particular one so um, we can afford to go a little bit more like that and just kind of drop it in and now let's mix this really deep rich kind of purpley color which seems which we're going to drop into here and really push that shadow darker on the underside there it needs it to go uh, to have a bit more oomph to the shadows and we've got little flecks of shadow in here and then push it darker into there and then we're kind of coming down now into the legs we need to separate that bit here and just going to bring it nice and simply down into there maybe give it a bit more of a blue feel as it comes into the legs a little bit more blue added let's bring the toe over the top of there and let's just bring this down to here push the brush down a little bit more to to do something like that get the toes and then it's casting a shadow on the branch something like that on a little bit more depth of tone a bit too harsh there let's soften it down with a touch of water okay now we've just got a little bit more care in this area go a little bit darker in the center of the chest there which separates the two areas and just some nice little markings here and there nothing major I 
and now we we look for some really deep darks or as dark, dark as we're going to go within this area um just a little bit darker in there and then we're now into let's go just into there where the wing is kind of casting a shadow into that area and just a bit of a core shadow in there while it's wet. You've got to do it while it's wet or it won't, it won't kind of work too well. We're probably nearly done with the, what I would consider to be the hardest stage of any watercolour, which is coming in to that initial layer, which we might really like, and just bringing it to more of a finish can be a little bit daunting. Uh, but just take your time with it, keep it simple and you'll be fine. A little bit more. We're pushing into a little bit too much detail now, so I'm gonna move away from there. And we're gonna come into the wing while it's still kind of damp here. So more purpley, even kind of very muted gray here. So that's too green. So if it's too green, we simply add more red and the red kind of mutes the green and gives us a nice neutral color. That's still a bit too kind of purpley so I'm going to add in a bit more blue there we go so all the time I'm literally just apart from adding in the orange into the chest in places I'm literally just balancing the primaries until I'm happy with where they sit with each other so nice simple washes into here and just reserve a few of the lighter tones even in the wingtip here bring that to a sharp point hit that there catch a little bit of light there just hint at the markings leaving some of the under color sort of showing through definitely gets darker down in that corner there and coming out of there we've got a nice little a few little markings here and there just straighten up that really simple that kind of links in. Remember about linking shadows if you can. If you can link your shadows together you, you end up with a painting that kind of holds together a bit better. If you've got too many breaks in the shadows it, it can fall apart a little bit you know visually. I quite like that as the, the back of the bird. There's a bit of an oddity here where it doesn't quite work so I'm going to come in to here and then just do that okay so really really simple very very simple kind of want it to run together a little bit more so I think what we need to do is come in with our deep rich darks really almost like neat paint phthalo uh, the Prussian blue quinacridone red aureolin yellow mixed together in fairly equal amounts to create a neutral tone and now we drop in our really deep darks into this existing wet wash and we start to maybe hint at some of these little extra markings you know it gets it gets darker in there Just pushing that darker. It gets darker under here, so I'm going to link that into the wash there, but I don't want to do too much in the tail because I like the tail as it is. Just going to, this background wing, going to keep it a little bit lighter than the, the foreground one just to create a tiny bit of sense of depth. Um, nothing too major. Might even drop a little bit of red in there to get it to run with the, the tail a little bit more. And we can always do more markings later if we need to come back over the top and just a bit more shadow cast on here and down there and really I'm kind of making up the this area so I might might come back to the big 
the big brush which feels a little bit more expressive uh, than getting caught up in some of these smaller details so this is very much kind of making it up as you go which can feel a little bit intimidating or sound like that's only reserved for people that know what they're doing but I promise I don't really know what I'm doing a lot of the time we're just kind of feeling my way as I go I kind of like this idea um, of some branches coming out and I might even break the edge of here a little bit more and just just make it a bit more expressive um, it doesn't even have to be from that branch and just keep it really simple there if you're going to do some of this stuff so easy to go over the top uh, you can always drop a bit more color in uh, we can always have it more kind of, of that sort of thing going on down here and less um, elsewhere that's quite nice that kind of works and I think just a little bit more of that sort of expressive brushwork in the, the sort of green of the background as well so let's get some nice aureolin yellow not too much red accidentally in the mix and a little bit more Prussian in there and just some nice big bold brush strokes it's a bit more yellow I think what I don't want to do is destroy all of this lovely colour underneath I really like a lot of what's going on here uh, and I, th I wonder actually if we leave that top area as it is and down here we just do a little bit of splatting to let the colours kind of run together a little bit more and I'm not so sure about this kind of acting as a perfect line through the middle of it all so I'm just going to break it up a bit um, yeah I like that doesn't need much more really it's coming into the eye and then it's finishing touches and kind of highlights down here uh, not highlights <laughs> the opposite dark accents okay so let's pop a nice simple dark into the eye not as dark as we're eventually going to go but like a nice sort of browny deep dark so Prussian blue well all of all the primaries mostly quinacridone red little touch of Prussian blue little touch of yellow constantly balancing them to kind of give what we want and just nice simple colour into the eye here which is going to go more into shadow in a bit just going to come with that same colour just to sep just to separate the bird from the background in a couple of places that I like it bleeding into the background a little bit but by just by putting that little dark there it just gives the viewer enough of an edge to tell us what size the bird is on its front kind of underside area there and we'd let that kind of bleed out into the background a little bit more there we can go a little bit darker in here where the almost like the foot is casting a shadow and the bird is casting a shadow over the branch but it's not doing so over here I want to come in and sharpen up the beak and I think we've got a couple more minutes and we've got this one again remember this is simplified quick watercolor birds so you know we can do um, spend much longer on on these paintings and I will do some longer length uh, and more involved ones but I really am enjoying painting these uh, quicker ones I think they're really good fun I think they suit birds really well I think it's a good practice with watercolor because it's such an immediate and such an expressive uh, medium that it, it can be nice just to sort of play around with it quickly like this we don't always have to ha get this feeling of um, having to produce a masterpiece that is has loads of times labored or spent on it um, not to say that these little watercolor pieces can't be a masterpiece but the point is more the getting out of the mindset of that a painting to be good has to have lots of time spent on it if we're kind of getting our tonal values right we're letting the color flow together um, 
you know, it, you can spend lots of time on a painting, but you don't have to to make it a good painting. And I think that's one of the main aims of this particular little series. It doesn't mean we have we need to be or we should be careless, but we also don't want to be too careful. It's somewhere in between, like having a bit of fun with it, having a, having a play with it, just enjoying the process. And you know, if it goes, it doesn't go as planned, and watercolors don't always. You know, if, we, if we've just kind of committed to spending a small amount of time on it and having some fun with it, if it really doesn't work out, then we've we've not massively lost anything. And every painting makes you a better painter. Not every painting will work, not by a long way, but every painting will make you a, a better painter. I can't remember who said that, but it's very, 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 very true. So there's the eye, I'm trying to just suggest the eye. Still looks a bit weird because we need a little play of light on the eye. Some of it is cast in shadow, some of it is cast, or some of it is hit by sunlight. Okay, so the only thing left to do really is I just want to sharpen up the beak a touch and I just want to bring the eye to life, or the, the white around the eye, it needs some casting in shadow. So I'm probably going to just use Prussian blue, nice and cool. If you look at the, the white in shadow, it's got a coolness to it. And I'm going to glaze it, just glaze some of it in shadow. So it's all in shadow down here, but it's got a little peak of light just at the bottom. And just in there, and lots of the top is hitting the light. So I'm just going to leave that little bit of light there. It's not as involved as the photo. Um, you could go in and put in a little bit of white gouache here and there to give more of the markings. It's not really what I'm intending to do. I just like that as a simplified version of our subject. For me it works for what we're aiming to do today. Like I said if you wanted to go more involved there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to see well what how how little can we can we paint and still get um, something that's interesting and a, a working painting. So just a few little finishes of, of markings on there. Just a few little just just feel like I want to sharpen that up to give a bit more of an illusion of of light kind of in that area and a little bit sharper in here with a few little extra markings in there and then do we go a little bit I just it just feels like it needs to have a little bit more definition in the beak more because I got the shape not quite as I wanted it so I want to redefine that shape with a dark running there um, and go a little bit darker still just to really define that I don't the line on the top is right but underneath it's ugly so I'm just going to hit that with um, there we go I'm fussing now so I'm going to leave it alone and you know what the eye would benefit I meant to leave out a little um, a little bit of white on the top of the eye just as a little highlight it can really benefit things I think a little dot of gouache would do wonders um, just to lift the eye it can be a little bit kind of cheesy or contrived popping a little highlight in the eye but often it does work and just don't overstate it just a little a little flick of light in the eye just there and it kind of pops and comes to life that's it guys let's try let that dry and then um have a little final look at it. So that's it guys, I just added a tiny little bit more separation in the chest there. Overall though, I'm really really happy with that, it's got the, everything that I wanted, it's got a nice feeling of light, I managed to really punch up the yellow and the orange in here but we've also got this deep but also kind of luminous transparent uh, kind of shadow area here, I've left it a little bit lighter there to give that sense of reflected light. I'm really happy with the dry brush work here. The wing I've managed to keep it nice and simple but it's kind of got the essence of the bird and I, I do like this slightly abstract area here. Really pleased with the head, as I said you, you don't have to get all of the markings in if you don't want to, however you could come back in with a little bit of gouache and pop in some of those markings or we could have made a more concerted effort with the dry brush work. Uh, and got more of the markings but for what I'm trying to achieve I really like this. I like the simplicity of the beak, we've just split it into a light side and a shadow side. The biggest questions are 
or the biggest things to think about are what sort of accuracy of shape we need and exactly how dark to go in the shadows. The background is really lovely and expressive. Actually, a lot of it came in the first pass. I did consider going darker in the background, but actually because the bird is so dark, um, I think it works really well to keep the background light. We've got a little bit of counter change, a bit of play of tone. So here the bottom half is in shadow with some light areas. We've lost a few edges here. We've got a nice light edge trapped by a slightly darker background and we've got some darker ed edges against some lighter backgrounds. Uh, and I managed to keep it all kind of fresh and lively and I love the way the colour is almost kind of exploding out of his chest um, in that direction. So one thing that I'm always trying to do is find a way of painting an eye that has a realism to it but is also kind of loose and expressive and a little bit more suggested than me going in and painting all the details. Again, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's not what I'm after personally. So I'm really happy with that as a kind of quite a loose, expressive eye. And the very final thing is that I'm really pleased with the way that we've got the kind of lights there, but they're held together with the shadows and I've linked the shadows together. So the head here links into the shadow under there sort of kind of links down here all the way into here that links wet into wet into the legs into the branch and also into here so it's not always that it has to be linked wet into wet but it's more that it's got this sort of pattern of shadow that almost kind of flows together and holds the painting together that's something that worked especially well in this one but i think that's it guys as i said at the start please do consider hopping over to my website and checking out what zoom demonstrations and courses i've got on you can hop over to my patreon page and find line drawing and the copyright free reference photo completely free of charge but you can check out what else is on offer while you're there don't forget to subscribe hit the like button drop me a comment have you got any requests of birds you'd like to see and until next time guys happy living Happy painting and I will see you very soon.